Folks, hello and welcome to Tavern Chat. I'm your host, Eric Tenkar, your bartender in the OSR. And uh, this, what's on the screen, has caused a little bit of a row online. So, from Gary Gygax and Chris Clark, Castle Wolf Moon, from Pulse Publishing. Gary and Chris's last unpublished D&D campaign. Well, and I'm just going to parse... Of course, the word in there, Gary and Chris's. So this is the last campaign that's unpublished that Gary and Chris worked on together. I don't see an issue with that. All right. It's not saying it was Gary's last unpublished D&D campaign. It's the last one that Gary and Chris worked on together. So hope that part's out of the way. Uh, what is Castle Wolf Moon? Well, we're going to get into that. What's the argument? We're going to get into that. Um, but there's a, a lot of drama and, you know, this is stuff that's going to come to fruition. Um, this, this, this from the archives of Gary Gygax. Now you can argue about Gary getting first billing on the project, but we, we've seen this numerous times before you give tough billing to the person whose name is the one that will gather attention. And I don't believe that the guy the Gary Gygax estate owns the Gygax trademark. I don't believe that that is true. I mean, it was Gail claimed that she owned it uh back in the days of Gygax magazine and that was litigated but the litigation never came you know, went never went to trial. It was never decided by a court. And my understanding is that you cannot trademark a proper name. But now maybe there's an argument over who owns the IP. Um, if the estate, if this was you know given to Chris, I would say that the estate doesn't have much of a hold on it. But I'm not a lawyer. Just going to kind of throw, throw that one out. So, let's look at the discussion that was going on on Facebook last night. And by the way, it was it was interesting. And I say it was interesting because my PMs were going crazy. Have you seen the latest from Luke? And this is what Luke's post was. Lots of people are asking me about a pending Kickstarter called Castle Wolf Moon. That's claiming to be something my father wrote as the primary author. By the way, if you go to Facebook, just search for Luke Dygax. This right now is his last uh, posting. Chris Clark listed as a second author. No, he's the second author listened, listed. Again, marketing, marketing 101. You always list the more, more famous individual first, right? That's just, that's just basic marketing. I, I, again, I don't have an issue, but I guess if I was worried about uh, the IP that I had some control over uh, being watered down because of another project, then I guess I could see the concerns. Um, Chris Clark, listed as a second author, did work with my dad in many projects in the late 90s and early aughts, as I recall. I don't recall my father ever talking about a Castle Wolf Moon campaign at all. Hmm. And we talked regularly about gaming and its projects. His focus was Castle Zagig, which was which is back in development now. Okay, so Castle Zagig is back in development at uh, Troll Lord Games. I believe Michael Stewart, famous for Save for Half, Save or Die podcast, is at the helm. Mike is very well. He's a very skilled creator. He also did Victorious. So, all right. I was asked to contribute to this work and was considering it 
as Chris has been a friend for many years. We'll have more on that later on in this. However, placing my dad's name cover as the lead author seems a bit, bit disingenuous, in my opinion. I am not associated with it. The E. Gary Gygax estate, again, these are the people that control the IP, is not associated with it to the best of my knowledge. And I do believe that somebody, well, the, I believe the attorney from the estate did pop into the thread and said we're not associated with this. Um, why am I posting this? I don't want people to back it thinking they are getting a finished work from my father when it is likely something more of a concept outline from 20 years ago. I am not omniscient on all things my father did or didn't do. However, it is worth questioning, in my opinion. Okay. So Ernie pops in. and the, the, I, I, There's like 80 comments on this thread. I did not grab everything. It's not... They, a lot of it is just, honestly, not all that relevant to what we're covering here. But, Ernie, I know that I recently wrote three multi-part encounters using paintings as a way of entry for this. I also believe that Heidi was doing something for this, too, though I have not asked her in the recent call. Dad and Chris Clark worked together very tightly, and he would be one of the few besides the Troll Lords and perhaps Matt Forbeck. Dad's last project, well, he had so many irons in the fire, and that, of course, is just one of his many unfinished projects. All right, moving on. Stephen Pulaski. And uh, Stephen talks about he played in the draft of Castle Wolf, uh, Wolf Moon, the third module in the series run by Chris Clark. And, and he, he said he's become friendly with Chris Clark. So. And I believe this is from, I'm going to say Dragon's Foot. So I thought I would ask about Castle Wolf Moon. I know it ended up being quite a bit longer than I, than I expected and, and then was going to be released as three or four modules. I keep looking for it, but haven't found it yet. Any idea if this one is going to get published anytime soon? Also, you are credited as the design consultant on the series. I was wondering how the division of labor split between you and Chris Clark on these. Are there any bits of the original Grey, Castle Greyhawk well, mixed in there? From Gary, as for my consulting, I reviewed Chris's uh, MSS. I'm assuming submissions for the series. Developed the content. Served as a sounding board and sometimes contributor. None of the material is based off my former campaign. It is excellent creative work from Chris. First of all, and again, this is Stephen. Um, Chris is always minimizing his efforts. Gary is always minimizing his efforts. I could tell you how the first portion of the manuscript was sent to Gary at 76 pages, only to be returned as 123. Um, oh, maybe this is Chris that's being quoted here. Um, I could tell you how the master storyteller here wrapped up every loose end I left. This is Chris. Created logic bridges to add strength and verisimilitude to the storyline and filled in the important details that would breathe life into the adventure. I think I'll just say this. Castle Wolf Moon would not exist without Sir Gygax. No, it isn't in any dimension. Castle Greyhawk. To say that Greyhawk had no part in inspiration would be a bold-faced lie. I am certain that many adventures have been sponsored by the far-reaching shadow of Greyhawk. So, now we get to the point where Chris and um, Luke start going back and forth. This is where it gets a little, I don't know why I say dirty laundry-ish, but it's, and it was, and I, this came down last night. It was still up this morning. So, fair game. Chris, let me say this. I have never said that Castle Wolf Moon was a Gary Gygax adventure that I helped him produce. I've always said that this was my adventure that he helped me to finish. Are you telling me that is a lie? You should check your facts before claiming them as such. And that's pretty much what Luke said in that opening. You should check your facts before claiming them as such, sir. I have told the story often enough that many reading this will have previously heard it. I created an adventure I thought was too large for publication at the time. Gary insisted I send it to him anyway. I believe because he was worried that a heck of a forged partnership 
had torpedoed the project and he did not want that responsibility. Gary was a good guy that way. Gary sent the management back in 10 days. That's a week and a half for us normies. And it was nearly twice the size of what I had sent him. Evidently, Luke feels this never happened, despite me having told that story for about the last two decades. Again, it appears that this week, Luke decided that just couldn't have happened. <coughs> Let's go on to some of the other assertions. Luke is telling you that his dad told him everything. Well, frankly, Luke, that's just not true. Then he talks about the mention of the divorce and all the interesting personalities they met in Los Angeles. Uh, yeah, I got some of that from Ernie uh, a couple of years back. I am thinking not, but he told me, and sorry, folks, that chain doesn't hear. I doubt sincerely that he discussed the unfinished works that I know of that he had for the legendary adventure, let alone all of his gaming stuff. That This is not to denigrate your relationship with your father. He loved you greatly, but you are sadly mistaken. If you think... Uh, if, 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 if you think he discussed everything with you. Okay. Moving on. Again, Chris. Last item. I You have nothing to do with this project because of your feeling. Strange that you signed a contract to contribute to the project in March and evidently had few such feelings at that time. Should I post a picture of the signed contract? Or you simply say you feel like you never signed it. Castle Zagic was a project your dad started about seven to eight years after he had contributed his 127,000 words to Castle Wolfmoon, by the way. And so perhaps you were just out of touch during that time. Not sure, but I can verify one thing for everyone reading this. I was there. Luke was not. Luke responds. I agreed to make a small contribution to the project based on your representation to me on the phone and years of friendly interactions. As I clearly stated here in my estimation, as this is my social media page, this is an overstatement. Now, if my father contributes a large amount to this project, why is his estate not involved? Well, again, now I, I, I'm going to just throw this out there, and maybe I'm wrong, but by the estate, it's why is the estate not getting paid for this? That's what it comes down to. So Gary could have done this work, and he probably he did do this work 25 years ago, give or take, and it was the project between Chris and Gary under one of their business partnerships but Luke is asking why the estate is not involved. And again, the estate would be involved for one reason, one reason only, in my humble opinion, to get a cut of the profits. So, and by the way, and then the estate trickles down the profits to the heirs, as well it should. It appears you want to use the name to your benefit, but then claim it's all to your benefit. That seems curious. Does this sound in any way to anyone like Gail back in the days of Guy Gax magazine? I'm just throwing it out there. I'd like to hear your opinions in the comments below. Also, shooting some attempts at personal barbs is not becoming, Chris. Once again, I expect better from you. Based on the years I've known you, perhaps there is something else going on. Yes, there is something else going on. I believe it's the primary backer of this project. Well, I'm not going to name it at the moment, but uh, there's a little history between uh, Luke, I believe, and the primary backer, which may be also coloring some of this. Um, I have a cell phone that you can reach me easily enough. By the way, Chris does not have a cell phone. Now, here's a little bit of tidbit that I also found to be relevant, and this is how I'm going to pretty much wrap up the coverage here. John R. Troy. Uh, John knows a lot of the players. He knows a lot of the history. He's certainly wired in. Just as a sounding board, Castle Wolfmoon, while not as well known as Castle Zaggy, is a legit partnership between Chris and Gary. All right. 
So now, as John is putting it, this is a legit partnership between Chris and Gary, which would mean the estate would have nothing to do with it. Okay? This isn't part of the estate. This isn't part of Gary's IP. This is something that was developed with Chris and Gary together. A project that kind of wound up in development hell that a lot of the legendary adventures worked in, though this module was generic. If you want to see both men talk about it, a search for Wolf Moon on Dragonfoot brings it up. Just view the search and click the links. There was at least one ad for it, probably the Legends fanzine Gary, and, Gary did to promote the work. If that link doesn't work, just search for Wolf Moon on Dragonfoot. It's in one of Zaggy's Wisdom's threads. I'll let people review and judge for themselves. I do think it's a stretch to say it's Gary's final work, but if you read it, it's just uh, me being the rules lawyer. It doesn't say it's Gary's final work. It's the, final, it's the last unpublished work campaign of Gary Gygax and Chris Clark together. So Gary could have other unpublished works that the estate owns. It could be an unpublished campaign that the estate owns that we don't know nothing about. That's certainly it. This is the last unpublished work worked on by Chris and Gary. Chris had the original concept. Let's see. If you view, he calls his contributions as a design consultant. And Chris had the original concept. And while rare, Gary did some WFH stuff that wasn't owned by him, like Slayer's Guide to Dragons slash Undead. So, folks, I don't expect any of this to die down necessarily anytime soon. Uh, when it comes to money, which I think is what this is actually sorting out to be when we talk about the estate, um, things can get can get a little uh, nasty, uncivilized. I will include a link to the Kickstarter with this uh, video. Um, I think it looks interesting. And again, uh, I've Chris is right now in uh, Canada. We've spoken briefly via PMs. Chris has offered uh, to do um, an on on the record interview with me when he returns. So I have. I have time to uh, get some questions together. So if you have questions you want me to ask Chris Clark about this project, please leave them in the comments section, and I will compile them so I have them ready for Chris when he returns back to the good old USA. On that note, folks, be safe, be well. God bless. Roll those dice. Roll them well. I'll catch you all later. Be good.